Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, IPIC and Rian, for, for having us today. Uh, I'm Vainant Window, uh, involved in Bible Revival. I travel the world. I'm self-funded for the last 35 years of my 45 years in ministry. And uh, I've met Lucas about 25 years ago and uh, was very interested in his ministry development, his gifting, his anointing. And part of my ministry is to support young men and ministry that has potential because God enjoys us as a family and a team. Uh, we had a bit of a chat because he had a bit of a slump in his ministry. And I brought him back to the basics. And the basics is very simple for ministry. And uh, I can share it to all of your ministries today. To put the word of God in the middle of your ministry means God gets involved. So I said, Lucas, put the word back. And that is what Lucas did. He's married. Shanari Korf, she's the real hero in the whole ministry, I can tell you. Because to be married to Lucas is an adventure on its own. He has two children. His ministry achievements is unique. He's got 18 world records so far. He's aiming for 20 just in the year 2020. So, good luck, Lucas, with that. He's multiple uh, keynote speakers in, in the world. He's a preacher. He's a bucket list evangelist. He's an author, he's a youth whisperer, he's a mindset coach. And it's exciting just to be part of Lucas's potential. A wonderful privilege to see what he's going to do with the What Did Jesus Say audio Bible, which he aims to distribute uh, to 2 million downloads all over the world in the year 2020. So, dear friends, it's an honor, it's a privilege to know Lucas, to be involved in his life, to be a mentor, to help him identify the sources where funding is. I always smile, and I'm closing with this. Ephesians 5, luckily God said he's going to provide our needs and not our budget. And Lucas knows how to create needs. And God is always at the point of need. So Lucas, God bless you. All right, as he introduced me, my name is Lucas Korf, multiple world record holder, author, speaker, mindset, mentor, and youth whisperer. That's how I introduce myself at schools because it's so hard to try and explain to a kid what you do and what your day job is. But before I get to that, I was, obviously, when I was born, it was a very special time in my life and it was very close, me and my mom. And the picture that was just on there now was I was fortunate to have a lookalike when I was a young man. And very fortunately uh, for me, though, all those things fell away and I found Jesus. So in finding Jesus, one of the first things God said to me is Gen X. Your ministry will be called Gen X. As a result of Gen X, the kids started calling me Rev X, Reverend X. They said that Generation X, they gave me, give me a theme, give us a motto for Gen X. Gen X exists to explosively execute Christ's example exponentially. And everywhere I went, I was speaking about this. And the Rev X thing just started coming out. And that was actually our first audio Bible we did. We said, rev up the gift of God on the inside of you. And in revving up the gift of God on the inside of me, I also found a good thing. And we married. And we stood on that beautiful mountaintop. That photo was submitted to a local uh, magazine that rejected it because it said they were photoshopped. But that was a very profound photograph because in that prime moment in my life, we started a church called Turning Point. Not because it was a not name God gave me, but because it was a time when pe people needed an experience and a turning point moment with like. Our logo was just simply a daddy holding a kid. I don't think the kid's real. That's looking a bit dodgy. But the, the, the logo was simply this. God's got you, man. Jesus digs you. God loves you as you are. Come to him, and there's many things he can do for you. And no, it's not a mistake putting that down there again. I just couldn't find the photograph when I spread her ashes on the same mountaintop five years later. Obviously, changed the dynamics of the ministry a little bit. Kind of disrupted the evangelist, evangelism-anointed pastor that preaches and people get healed and things happen. And a young 12-year-old guy finds me in a mall while we were busy building a skate park. And he said to me, yo, pastor, where you at? And I said to him, what do you mean? He said, you, we can't find you. you. You know where to be found. I said, listen, I'm going through an emotional time and uh, you know, I've, I've got some stuff going on. He says, we know your wife's dead. That's over a year ago. Pastor, keep your word. You say to us at schools, if you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. You say to us, you never, never, never give up. You've given up on us, pastor. Why don't you do the August standing without a saddle or a pole on the bike? which I did. Not that quick, though, but it happened. We did it. We, we finished it. And we finished what 
He helped me keep my word. We built that entire skate park there in Parklands. Another one, another one of the world records was where we saw a crane at Bayside busy building a busy building base. Um, Eden on the bay, and a bunch of kids say, I bet you can't, if you did the Argus, I bet you can't do the same amount of time of Argus on a crane on top of a, on top of a spinning bike, and I said, I can. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. The kids kept on daring me stupid things, and so we promoted the audio Bibles in the schools, and in that time, God is the rewarder of those who dil diligently seek Him, and God gave me an upgrade. My wife gets so upset when I say that, but He gave me a woman who found me as I was, loved me. We bore forth children of, we should have been 10 by now, because we just make the most beautiful babies. But in that time, we started traveling, and as part of a bully campaign, yeah, I'm playing around with a bunch of cage fighters, which was a result of a bully campaign we had in schools. We teach kids, you turn your cheek the first time, you're allowed to duck, run, or either hit back. So we, we've broken a whole bunch of world records, but the, the sound that the boxing mitts made, we got a young guy to beatbox that for us, make sounds. So we launched and recorded an entire beatboxing Bible where the background music of the Bible that we now distributed in schools was literally... And it was literally a sound, and the kids loved it. I mean, try and, try and explain to a kid Matthew 1. Try and explain to anyone who's ever preached on Matthew 1. And so we distributed the audio Bibles. It was great. And then God gave me an idea. Why don't you distribute one million identity audio Bibles? The challenge of these kids, we need to get them to understand their identity. And we got sponsors all over the place, and it was great. And we printed them, and we traveled. Now, these identity audio Bibles was not easy work achieving. I said, okay, people, for the sponsorship, I'll cycle. But I'll do it standing like I always do because I stand for Jesus. How about you? I stand for Jesus. Yes, I do. So I challenged the kids. And I thought, well, I can get a tandem. Why don't we do a standing tandem event? Jesus can help me out. So I didn't ride alone on that tandem. Everyone said to me, but, but why are you doing it alone? I didn't do it alone. I had my big map that I drew out of all the stops that I needed to stop at. I made sure that it was, every day was holiday for the children. My wife was driving. That was actually the big faith factor. So it wasn't so much that I was cycling so far. She was recording. She had kids in the car. She needed to feed them, and things were going down. We were distributing audio Bibles, speaking at corporates and schools. It was a madhouse. But while we were doing that, I wanted to just show you this. This is some of the schools and the responses. Two of the schools, they said, I will not get a response out of. You start telling them about who they are. You start telling them about their identity. And you will be surprised what happens within a child's heart. They respond. And it's not that one school specifically was a school where they said they will walk out. Then I started doing some interviews. I thought, okay, I'm not going to get reach these kids by myself. Let me interview some cool people. So we started interviewing some cool people, and we had the coolest interviews, and we said, all we're going to share is, please just share with your database all these audio Bibles, and we can reach a nation, man. We can make a difference. We can go crazy, and it didn't work so, so well. So I thought, okay, let me go to America, and I ended up becoming the John Maxwell Youth Coordinator for South Africa, and had all these oaks in America saying, we're going to support this thing. And we were excited, and we made a nice banner, but that still didn't do the thing, and I realized it's going to have to come from within. Stop going there to try and get funding for ya. Ya's the thing. And seeing that my second name is Volrot, I know it's Dodger, I don't have time to explain it, but let's start something. Volrot, vs Iman Sahal, be someone's hero. And I taught the kids, your own first. That's why we don't love people. That's why we don't love one another, because we don't love ourselves. And the only thing that can get you to start loving yourself is to start understanding that God, through God first. And I've got this little thing that I put together, their daily faith spark. This is my last screen, and then I've got 20 seconds left to end off. I want you to donate this screen as a, as a, 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 a Blake van Dankbar, Dankbar Vies, to just say, you know what, we want to put it out there. Next year, up until June, we are doing eight different world records where we are including 4,000 youth doing a massive flash mob where we will be teaching them a cup song that we translated into Christianese and we are going to reach them and get a new motivated audio Bible to them. And then we implemented a system where we can follow up because that's been the void. 
we need to follow up these kids. To reach them and give them a Bible and give them something is easy. There needs to be a process to follow up. Daily Faith Spark launches on my birthday, the 1st of January, 2020. And 2020 is going to be a year that we're going to get those, the WDJS, What Did Jesus Say? audio Bible, narrated with some dramatic background music for South African kids and their parents and whoever cares to listen. And our goal is simply... 2,000 audio Bibles in the hands of kids across South Africa. With that, I say amen. Remember, love God, love people, love life, and live a life worthy of a legacy. Amen. Lucas Korf. So I went and I visited your website, lucaskorf.com, and the first thing that I saw is you speak about free daily coaching. You speak about seven minutes, seven days, audio Bibles, world records, themes like do not judge, childlike faith and wisdom. This is a huge variety of things that you've been doing. Just water it down for us. Why do you do it? So I, I believe my real name on my actual ID, my second name, is Volrat. Mm. So the name Volrat, I never wanted to the year again. I walked away from it. It was the end of... Then God just said to me, what's your name? And I said, what do you mean, what's my name? God doesn't know what my name is. Where's my ministry at? And he just said, Volrod. And I went and looked at the story of Volrod. And I looked at the 62-year-old man that came to check up what was going on. His son, uh, Christian Voltemade, was busy. He was the corporate on duty. Christian meaning Christ, little one, little anointed one, looking at the problem. Everyone's drowning. And, and he said, but we're going to do something about this. And he took his horse. And his horse's name was Funk. That's why Daily Faith Spark. And he said to Funk, Let's do something about this. And 14 times he went in and the 15th time he didn't go. And for me, it was wanting to be that euro to even one. So we started focusing on values, implementing values and structures within schooling and making sure that there's a follow-up system. Because we went in thousands, it was an incredible ministry. And one day God just said to me, when are you going to stop making orphans? And I said, what do you mean? He said, you're just hit and running. You're leading them to Jesus, and there you go on your merry way and put your photo on Facebook and, ha, ha, please sponsor me. I'm reaching the world for Jesus. And I realized if I can't walk and love, the Bible doesn't say go and save them. It says go and make disciples. So all those topics and all those, team, all those aspects of the ministry is simply to do something relevant and out of the ordinary, taking a stupid day which I didn't know I can do. So I'm quite enjoying all these world records at the moment. And so far, so good. My, my wife does say, take it calm and don't do uh, above extreme type things, which I'm doing. Mm. And the fun part is no matter what happens, it's, whether success or failure, you're still winning. And that's the message we put across. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And through that, we bring in the audio Bible component and we beatbox audio Bibles and we do the Bible in a way that the kid will respond and at least give the opportunity to listen. And that's where we sort of get to their hearts. I'm looking at your projections and you're saying your revenue for your current financial year is two million. What are you going to do with that two million in one minute? So that all goes straight into production. We're busy creating WDJS, What Did Jesus Say? Audio Bible. It took me a year to get the entire thing written. Every, they want, the youth asked me, we want a Bible without any bumble humble in it, they say, of the Bible. I nearly freaked. They say, don't put all the words in between. What did Jesus say? We want that. Wrap it, make it lacquer, put sound effects to it, and, put it, and it must be in chronological order. Don't put four gospel versions in. Put the Bible, what Jesus said, in a hearable format with some serious sound effects. And that is our entire project. So getting that project off the ground, finishing the recordings, getting the producing and production of that, an app that can then get it to them so that when we visit the schools and our teams of people throughout South Africa that are already in schools and already a life coach in the school, we can simply just produce it through the network and the kid can get his audio Bible. Nice. That's it. Give a hand of applause, guys.